have any idea where Craig is? Well, he hasn't skipped town. If that's what you're worried about, I was just with him. Well, it can't be good to be late to your own trial. Tell me about it. The jury will think he's indifferent, which will only add to the wonderful portrait that the prosecution has already painted. In the case of the People versus Craig Montgomery, the Honorable Judge Randall Franklin presiding. Be seated. Mr. Winthrop, it looks as if your client has chosen not to appear today. Apologize for the delay, Your Honor. Great way to kick off for the defense. No, no, no. I hope I don't have to remind you of the gravity of the charges you face, Mr. Montgomery. Your Honor, my client is very well aware of the import of the charges against him, but was unavoidably detained and begs the court's pardon. We are ready to proceed. Very well, Mr. Winthrop. Call your first witness. I call Sierra Montgomery to the stand. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you guide? I do. Please be seated and state your name for the record. Sierra Esteban Montgomery. You are Craig Montgomery's prior wife, is that correct? Yes, I am. Can you tell us a little about your marriage, Sierra? I'm sorry, may I call you Sierra? That's fine. Craig and I were married until our firstborn son was nearly 20. A long time. So you know him well? Very. And during all of those years, was Craig ever violent? Never. In all of those years, did he ever give you cause to fear for your welfare or for the welfare of your children? Absolutely not. Craig is a good father and he loves his children very much. Why did you break up? We grew apart. Over the years, our lives and careers took different paths. Did Craig have much money when you first married? No, he didn't. But he thrived on working. But he was never able to make as much money as I had. So it was your money that supported the family? For the most part. That's one of the things that drew us apart. Naturally, being the greater money earner, you made a generous financial settlement with Craig at the time of the divorce? No. No, there was no settlement. You mean Craig left the marriage without asking you for a penny? He insisted. In fact, while we were married, he hardly touched my money at all. Craig is a proud man for whom in financial independence is very important. Thank you, Sierra. Uh, no further questions, Your Honor. Ms. Montgomery. Was the defendant the trustee of your son's trust fund? Yes. Did he ever borrow against it? Yes, he did. Do you know how much? It was several million, if I'm not mistaken. Well, that explains why he didn't need a financial settlement from you when he had already pilfered his son's trust fund. Objection. I wasn't aware we'd begun closing statements. Yeah, we haven't. Please confine your cross to questions, Ms. Griffin. I'll rephrase. Ms. Montgomery, did your ex-husband need money from you since he had already taken large sums from his son? Objection calls for speculation. I'll allow it. Answer the question, Ms. Montgomery. He didn't take the money. He borrowed against the trust, which is perfectly legal and really not that unusual. Apparently, a business obligation came due, which necessitated Craig using the money. But he repaid every penny, and on time, even though the date had been manipulated by the executor. Thank you for clarifying that for us. Do you recall the date the money was repaid? July 11th of this year. Interesting. July 11th. Barbara Ryan lay in a coma on July 11th, only a few short weeks after marrying Craig Montgomery. Where is she? Who? Who? Carly's not here, Molly. Oh, great. So she's already at the arraignment. That's great. Look, Jack, I have the bail money right here. So you just... Somebody beat you to it. Craig and his attorney. They rode in on the white horses. They took care of bail. 
you know she should never have been arrested in the first place, Jack? I can't believe you let that happen. I didn't bring the charges, Molly. That was a district attorney. You know what? I really don't need this from you right now. Well, excuse me for being a little upset, you know, but my cousin's being accused, being being called a, an accessory to attempted murder, Jack. And you know how ridiculous that is, you of all people. It doesn't matter what I believe. Well, it does to Carly. Yeah, well, she and I have been through this already. Oh, and let me guess. You shrugged and you told her she's on her own now. Is that, is that right? I can't believe that you're going to let some picture, some stupid picture that was dredged up and brought into court, blind you to everything that's real. No, not everything. She's made some questionable choices, wouldn't you say? I know she's hard to understand sometimes, Jack. Look, I love her to death. She's my cousin, and she defies me sometimes, too. Especially when it comes to Craig Montgomery, like when she turned over that insurance money to him. I was completely blown away. But Wait a minute, back up. What, right what, what insurance money? I didn't... I don't... I assumed that you knew. Knew what? Spill it, Molly. Um, <clears throat> I don't really know the details. I just know that she was beneficiary to some insurance policy that was set up by Winston. So? So there was this syndicate in Hong Kong, and they were, they were leaning on Craig. They were really muscling him. They were threatening his daughter's life, Jack, if he didn't turn over some big sum of money. So Margot went to Carly, and she begged her to help him out. Margot went to Carly. Margot Hughes. Yeah. She was pretty desperate, Jack. Her niece's life was at stake, OK? And whatever she said worked, because Carly ended up turning over the insurance money to Craig. How to much? A million dollars. A million dollars? Yeah. Craig had a claim on the money, too. So? Carly felt that it was partly his. Right, right. And the insurance money, the insurance policy that Winston Lowe set up was that horse. He took it out on that horse, and that was money that was Craig's money. Jack, Carly could have done anything with this money, but she chose to save a little girl's life. Right. So Craig would be forever in her debt. Maybe she didn't tell you because, I don't know, because she didn't want to flaunt it. That's weak, Molly. I don't know why she didn't tell you, but let's just not turn this into some sinister thing. Well, Carly has been strapped for money her entire life. A million dollar insurance settlement, that's a once in a lifetime thing. And then, hallelujah, finally, the answers to her prayers falls in her lap. And what does she do with it? She gives it away to Craig. Women don't just hand over a million dollars to Jack, guys they feel nothing like... for. Please, Molly, don't say another thing. You found out what you needed to find out. Carly's not here, but she is safe. I'm sorry. I just need some time to deal with this whole thing. Jack. Jack, is Margo around? She's in court, pal. All right, listen, Jack, I know you don't want to hear it, but I think Emily and I have made some real headway on finding this guy who planted the bomb. I don't bomb. believe this. I don't believe you're still pushing this, Hal! Come on, Jack. We could really use some department you just listen here. to what we've got, Jack. We've got an address on this subject. Now, if you can just bring him in, I'm going to call him. Well, so much for departmental backup. Yeah, looks like we're on our own, Hal. Yeah. Just you, me, and our friendly neighborhood psycho. <laughs> 